today is about chromatography. Chromatography is a fast and reliable technique for separation. Uh, you can separate the components of a mixture uh, using their difference in polarity. In chromatography, we have a stationary phase and we have a mobile phase. So the stationary phase that we are using uh, for the um, for TLC, it's is basically um, a um, alo alumina or um, silicon dioxide uh, coated on this plastic film, and it could be glass or, or plastic uh, plastic film that is our stationary uh, phase. And uh, when we use the um, samples on the TLC, so in general, uh, chromatography can be used also for identification of the compound. So we can identify the compound. Uh, we can also use to monitor a reaction to make sure a reaction is complete or not. Uh, that means if the, the reactant and product, they have different polarity, it will show different uh, distance traveled on PLC or on any chromatography, different retention time or retention factor. And uh, as a result, we can identify them. It, the, the time or the distance traveled by any of the sample on a stationary phase, it depends on polarity of the sample, depends on polarity of the stationary phase, and also polarity of the uh, mobile phase. Since we cannot repeat this from one trial to another trial, it's very hard to be consistent and it must be consistent. So when we are using uh, chromatography, like a TLC, trying to identify a sample, all of our sample must be on the same plate. That means that our unknown is going to be on the same plate along with all possible known samples, which that's part of the experiment we are doing today. We are going to, uh, to identify unknown, and the three possible known samples for that would be uh, ascorbic acid, uh, would be acetaminophen, or acetyl salicylic acid. So our unknown is one of those uh, known samples. And we are going to place all the spots on the same, uh, same plate. So the, when you look at it, the, the, when you read the lab manual, um, it shows a diagram. And that diagram is going to uh, kind of gives you a hint how to set up your own diagram. You would have a, you would draw on a piece of paper or you just follow what's in the lab manual and uh, you are going to, uh, to spot the, the sample on the TLC plate uh, following the same order that is in the, is in the uh, lab manual. Um, so the, you, can, you don't want to write on the TLC plate because if you write on it, you might scratch. You cannot scratch the plate. You cannot damage the damage the plate. So um, you can make that diagram on piece of um, on piece of uh, paper, and then follow the same. And carefully, you are going to place the small samples on the uh, TLC plate. When you place those samples on the TLC plate, you want to make sure that the height of the sample is going to be about. I mean, when I say one third of an inch from the bottom of the plate, uh, of the plate uh, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but what has to be done for sure is that the level of the sample must be higher than the level of the liquid that you have in the developing um, chamber. So if you draw the line at this level, about one third of an inch from the bottom of the plate, then the level of the sample in the developing chamber must be lower than this. If you don't do that, if the sample that you are going to spot, so you're going to have like four spots here, one, uh, two, three, and, and four, and the four spots when you place your sample, you place in the, in the developing, chamber, if the solvent is too high, this sample is going to dissolve and go in rather than moving up with the, with the solvent. So your developing chamber is going to be a closed jar. And uh, I'm going to use a piece of uh, filter paper. 
And that filter paper should actually be on the side of the, of the glass. The purpose of this filter paper is that it's going to pull up the solvent when we add the solvent for the, or the mobile phase to the, to the jar. It's going to pull it up and it will make this uh, space or the air inside the jar saturated with this developing solvent. And then moving up is going to be more, more smooth. Um, sometimes you could just close the jar and uh, shake it a few times, that's going to, uh, or, or swirl it a few times, that's going to add up or makes it faster, that saturation, because the sample is going to evaporate. When you place the, the TLC plate inside the jar, just want to make sure what I mean by the level of the solvent. See that now I have the spots already um, measured or marked on the TLC plate. The level of the solvent cannot be higher than that line. It has to be lower than that line. Based on the size and based on this setting, I just say 10 milliliter of the, of the solvent. But if your jar, the jar you're using is wider, that number of milliliter needs to be adjusted. So it's not like an exact number. As long as the level of the liquid is going to cover the bottom of the plate, but it's not going to reach the line that you have your, your samples. After you place the TLC plate, they are going to, the, the solvent is going to go up on the plate based on the capillary action. The same way that when you put like a capillary tube in liquid, the liquid moves up. And with the same action, the liquid from the mobile phase is going to move, move up on this plate. As it reaches this sample, then these samples, they're going to have interaction now with two uh, phases. One is the stationary phase, which is a polar uh, plate that we have here on the TLC. And the other one is your mobile phase. Depends on the tendency to have like more interaction or closer interaction or more uh, liking of the mobile phase is going, is going to move up with the mobile phase. But if it likes the polar uh, stationary phase is going to stay with the, the, with the, with the, um, the, uh, the plate or the stationary phase is going to move slower. At the end, when the solvent reaches to the top of the plate, you don't want to continue all the way to the top. I've been touching this plate, so I'm not going to use it. Normally, you just touch the side once. You have to be very careful. You don't want any residue from your hand, the oil, to get on the plate because it will show later. So you just touch the, the side. I'm just using this for practice. I will not use it. Uh, for the um, for actual experiment. So when the solvent reaches about you know half a, half an inch from the top of the of the plate, you are going to remove from developing chamber and right away you are going to draw a line um, that marks how far the solvent has moved up. Then you would use the ruler from that's the starting point and is going to the end point that distance is the distance that solvent has traveled. Now, let's say one of these compounds travels up here, the other one goes up only this much, and then uh, third compound or the third one is going to go all the way up, uh, but your unknown is going to go up here. So we, we will see this today in action also, but I just want to, to see how we are identifying our unknown. The last point was the unknown. So we are looking for how far the unknown has traveled and compare that to the three known sample. If the distance traveled by the unknown is exactly same distance as traveled by the uh, by um, compound A or the first sample that we have, because I know based on the diagram what's going to be, then my unknown is going to be matched with the sample one or the known sample one. If the unknown goes only to here, then it's going to be similar to uh, compound two. Or if it goes all the way up here, then we know that our unknown is identical to the sample, sample three. 
visually you can actually see if if they give like different color which we also experienced that in the second part of the experiment today uh, or uh, they would give like a you know the just the calculating the rf the rf is the distance traveled by each of the sample divided by distance traveled by the uh, by the solvent so we can calculate the rf value for each of these uh, compounds and then compare the RF of unknown to the RF of known sample, identify the, the compound. We can also use this, uh, we are using actually, uh, for confirming our extraction technique from last lab. So we save the, the sample from last lab, which is extraction, and I will be setting up another plate uh, for the uh, for the um, TLC of the sample that I got uh, from the neutral compound, so I would call this one N and then one acid. So I have a neutral compound and then I have the acid. I will spot here, develop it when it goes up, you know, half an inch from the top. I will stop and then find out if this sample is going to show only one spot or it is going to show more than one spot. Let's say if that sample shows one spot here and a tiny spot right here, what does it mean? It means that the sample neutral compound is a mixture of the neutral compound and some of the, the acid compound was left over. If the sample is pure, it would only show one, uh, one spot or one sample so it doesn't show like separation i was thinking in the procedure you you read that you only put two samples i was thinking today i'm going to make a sample c i'm going to mix the two of them so you could see that when there's a mixture of the two how both of them is going to show on the plate so if it's mixture of the two, you see two, but if it's a pure sample, you would see only, only one. Um, so that's the second part of the TLC. That's one of the application uh, for, the, uh, for the chromatography or for um, TLC to monitor and confirm either the reaction or the separation technique, which I chose the separation technique for, um, for this experiment. The first step for me to start the experiment, because I want the developing chamber to get saturated with the, uh, with the mobile phase, I'm going to uh, prepare my mobile phase, which is like 8% of um, acetone and water. So that's like 92% acetone and 8% of water. I'm adding, uh, since I want 10 milliliters, I can uh, just mix it in a graduate cylinder. So I'm going to go to like 9.2, approximately 9.2 with the best estimate with this graduate cylinder measuring of the, the acetone. And then I will add 0.8 milliliters of water, okay? So I have to trust me with this measurement because it's not focused for you to see it. So 8% of the water in acetone solution, going to place in the developing chamber, close the jar, and two or three times, so it starts evaporating, and the inside of the jar be um, saturated. Making a second sample, 9.2 of the of the acetone and 0.8 milliliters of...